Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this little guy. This is the Kaiser T1. But before we go much further, I've got a little disclaimer for you. This knife was provided to me directly from Kaiser themselves. They reached out months ago now, and uh, wanted to send me knives. I said, of course, sure, but the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly are on the table. Might even call it junk. They still sent the knives, and in fact, they sent the second round of knives. Even after in my first round, I didn't have such nice things to say about one of them. So... Gotta respect that, I guess. But anyways, um, so just having that on the table there, I'm trying not to let this affect my review too much, either on the positive or the negative side, because it's a tendency to go both ways. But anyways, there you go. Um, next thing, the designer on this guy is Uli Henneke. Um, I'm sure I've mispronounced his name, but he's a German guy. He is actually the guy responsible for the Spyderco Uli's. Um, which more people are going to be familiar with. So that's something of interest there. And then finally, let's do a size comparison, as always. Uh, right here is your Spyderco Delica. So you can see the blade's a little longer than on your Delica here. Right here is a Spyderco PM2, so a little shorter than the PM2. But if you note, the height of the blades is actually relatively similar, at least the height of the ground portion of the blades. And it's actually a little bit thinner than the PM2 as well. We'll come back to that a little bit later on here. Um, so that's good. Here is your Ontario rat number two and your rat number one. So it's kind of a nice intermediate size going on between there. And then finally, another of the Kaisers they sent along, the Kaiser Guru. Uh, so here you go. There's your comparison. So uh, let's go on ahead and jump into the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly of the little Kaiser T1 here. Okay, so on the good side, first off, I like the size of this guy very much. Um, the blade on this guy is just under three and a half inches. Well, actually, it's three and a quarter. Basically, no matter how you're measuring, that's a nice size, and it feels great in my hand. Speaking of which, the ergonomics are generally speaking pretty good. There are two hot spots. We'll talk about them later. But overall, this feels well, you know, feels nice in the hand. I got no real complaints about it, ergonomically speaking. Next thing, um, the clip on this guy, speaking of those hot spots, um, is actually a very nice clip for putting in your pocket. You can see here. Here, there's a fair amount of uh, sort of space underneath the clip. Makes it very, very easy to slide your fabric underneath into there. And that's good. The other thing is it's got plenty of flex and plenty of ramp on there. I mean, this clip is just a pleasure to use in practice, and also the, the angle of it will help to move this knife out of the way. And the fact that there's no flipper tab makes it even nicer in the pocket because there's nothing to catch up on as you slide your hand past as you go into your pocket. Just just nice in that way. Um, so that's good. Next thing I gotta say is that the design of this knife is kind of appealing to me. Um, it's a very simple design. It's just a contoured titanium scale with a straightforward sort of blade. But, and hopefully you can see this, it flows very nicely. This line here is not just a straight line. It's got a little bit of curvature to it, and that curvature actually continues on to the uh, grind of the blade itself, so you kind of get a swoosh thing that's going throughout here. And same thing on the other side, and the pocket clip is sort of a complementary curve. This is just a nicely designed knife, and even the blade itself has a nice curvature. It's, it's pretty. Um, you can tell that 100%, and the designer has done a great job here. And they've done a pretty good job implementing it as well with some nice details. The blade finish is very nice. It's not quite as reflective as the Sleesh buoy or something, but it is one of those reflective stonewash sorts of blades. Um, and I also will say that the handle finish is very nice. Uh, Kaiser has a tendency to make these very blasty sort of finishes like on the Guru here, that just kind of take a lot of the beauty out of the materials. I mean, sure, they're nice in the hand at some level, but I like this finish a lot. You can see there are slight machining marks on it. Maybe you can see that. I don't know if we got enough detail here. But um, whatever. It's just, it is a beautiful finish, and it brings me some joy, especially relative to those blasted ones. Um, another couple of things to highlight here is that the, uh, the maker's mark on this guy is nice. Um, it's well done and it's subtle and it's it's just it's nice there um the lanyard loop on this knife is actually very nice as well i don't tend to say that but the reason i do is that in this case not only is it relatively unobtrusive but it actually helps a little bit with the ergos because it allows this little surface this little pocket becomes effectively a rounding for this to sit up against the heel of your hand here so this back edge is more comfortable with that lanyard cut out than it would have been without it i think so nicely done there. And like I said, this little grind line following through here, that's just nice. So there you go. Next thing I love about this knife, um, and one of the things I love most about this, is the action on it. This is a knife using a thumb stud. There's no flipper tab, there's no nothing else, but it is running on bearings. 
And that has the, uh, the thumb studs and bearings aren't super common in the knife world for whatever reason, but here it is just spectacular because it means that once, and it's got a very nice detent is the other issue here. Uh, once you get this guy fired open, it deploys reliably, firmly, happily, no problem. It's a joy to use, I'll be honest with you, and it's also a joy to shut because on these bearings, it's a very smooth action. You just need to give it a little bit of a push with your finger and it shuts beautifully. I like this action very much. It's a, it's a great combination. Very smooth. Um, sort of similar. Another knife that had a, a similar feeling was the Tab Dauntless uh, Mark IV, I believe. It was another thumb stud and bearing knife. And this is honestly even a little smoother than that. So this is a nice action. I like it very much. And then finally, um, the price on this guy is actually nice. Handling this guy, I didn't look up the price. Actually, I didn't know the price when I first got it because it hadn't been released yet. Um, but, uh, you know, I was figuring about 200 bucks, And they came in a little shy of that. Um, this comes in at 170 bucks which is fine. This is S30V steel, I'm sorry, S35VN steel. Um, it's a great cutting tool. It's a titanium frame lock that's overall done pretty damn well. I mean, that price doesn't bother me whatsoever. It's in competitive territory, but it's a very competitive knife. Um, and you can absolutely get a titanium frame lock for cheaper, but not with this thumb studs bearing kind of thing, not with this kind of cutting ability. Um, you know, the closest thing is probably that Dauntless, uh, which is 350 bucks and doesn't cut all that well. Uh, so I, I like this price very much. It seems to me to be in a competitive region and it competes well there. So uh, there you go. That's the good. The price is very nice. The action is great. Um, there were some nice details implementing a nice design. It's got a nice clip and the size is nice and it feels pretty good in the hand too. Let's talk about what's great here. To me, the greatest thing about this knife is that it is a spectacular cutting tool. The reason I say that is a couple of things. Um, first off, the steel on it is S35VN, which is one of my very favorite steels, um, 100%. But it's it's done very, very well to be a great cutting tool. You can see here that the thumb stud is out of the slicing path, and there's no flipper tab down here, which can often be a little bit of a problem, kind of sticking up past your finger and getting in your way as you're trying to do cuts. Not as bad in this case here. But still, um, it's got a very tall grind to it. It's a very flat grind to it. The blade itself is not all that thick. Uh, and that's that's a wonderful thing. Compare this to the PM2, for instance, from Spyderco. This is a thinner blade. This is about the same thick, maybe slightly thicker than your Ontario Rat Number no. 1, which is also a very nice slicing tool. And so that uh, thinness of the blade, coupled with this tall and flat grind, is a beautiful thing, and it leads to this knife being spectacularly thin behind the edge. Um, it's not to the point where it's like, oh my god, I'm scared, but it's really, really good. And I bet with a little bit of careful sharpening, you could thin that out even more, and it would be even slicier. So that's just beautiful, and it comes with a sharpening choil, which helps to maintain that sort of beautiful edge. And, you know, the blade shape itself is very, very functional, and all of those things add up to make this a cutting machine. This is a pocket knife that cuts all damn day long. It is a great, great tool for actually cutting things. And the days that I have carried it, I have loved it because it's great for things like foam, for apples, for making cuts in the heart of plastic, where a knife that's got a very thick edge, uh, that's kind of thick behind the edge, becomes a bit more of a problem. This guy is just beautiful in that way. I just, I love this as a functional tool. This is a great pocket knife for when you actually need to cut things. And that's not super common in 2017, which is super depressing, by the way. But for me, at least, that's what's great here. It actually cuts things. Let's talk about what's bad. Okay, so on the bad side, mostly nitpicks, couple of little issues. Um, first off, the bearings are not necessarily what you want in a hardcore cutting tool. I was just kind of pitching this as being a great cutting tool, and that's 100% true. But bearings are not great in all conditions. If you're in a situation where, for instance, you need... Uh, you're going to be working in gritty or dusty or ugly, powdery conditions. Bearings are going to clog up sooner. They're going to have trouble. The action you're going to get is going to be a little, well, frankly, ugly. So you need to know your needs a little bit before you buy a knife that's on bearings that's meant to be a hard-working tool for you. Next thing, complete nitpick here. I don't love the pivot. Um, it's a torque screw in the middle there, but this knife is very, very clean, very, very pretty. And then this pivot seems a little bit weirdly rococo. Um, I just don't see the need for it. 
there. Um, I know that it's what Kaiser uses on a lot of their knives. It's just part reuse, but it, it strikes me as a little bit strange on this particular knife. Next thing, um, there are some areas where the fit and finish is not top of the line. For instance, um, I'm not a big fan of this clip that overlaps this back screw here. Practically speaking, it's not a big problem, and if you ever need to get that out for whatever reason to remove this backspacer, you can just... Um, Actually, no, I think the backspacer floats. But still, uh, you could unscrew the clip, but it's just a weird little situation there. Other issue, um, the backspacer here is not terribly uh, flush with the, uh, the, the rear scales here. Uh, this is just a, I mean, it's just a thing. It doesn't actually have a major effect, but it is something that is a sign of a slightly reduced fit and finish. You can even see some light on either side there. Not perfect there. And then finally, um, on the fit and finish front, the thumb stud on this knife actually loosened up a little bit, which is kind of unusual. Um, it is just two screw-together pieces in there, but I think whoever assembled it the first time forgot to put Loctite on this time. So keep an eye on that for your own knife. I just noticed it being a little rattly, so I took it apart, put Loctite on there, and then tighten it right back up. It's fine since, but something to look out for. Um, then finally, on that side, um, the detent on this knife softened up seriously after maintenance. What I kind of suspect happened is that uh, when they were tweaking this guy, adjusting it, getting it ready to go at the factory, uh, there must have been some grit or some, some issue going on in there uh, that made the detent seem a lot hotter than it actually was. And so when I went through and I cleaned it out, uh, afterwards, the detent was a little bit softer. And so what I ended up doing is just taking the knife back apart and bending the lock bar very slightly in this direction to increase lock bar tension. Then when I put it back together, the tent was beautiful. It's in great condition, but that was a little unusual. Um, but, you know, that's life. All those things and nitpicks, there are two slightly more serious issues. First one is that this is going to be a little bit slippery. I, I like this finish very much. I think it's very attractive, but there's no denying that a, a really hard blasted finish, something along the lines of your Sebenza, is going to stick in your hand a lot better in oily or ugly conditions like that. There is some contouring here, and the, the pocket clip actually provides some grip for your hand, so it's not like this is just going to come flying out your hand, but it is not something you need to be carrying at the Vaseline factory. And then finally, Finally, um, on the bad side, there are some hot spots. The pocket clip being the big one, and the fact that the pocket clip is relatively flat along the top here, rather than sort of rounded off, I think is the big culprit there. If they rounded off this area of the pocket clip, I think it would be a lot more compelling, at least in the hand, although design-wise it might not have worked so well. Who knows? But either way, those are my two issues with this knife, um, and those are the only ones that are of real consequence, is that there were a couple of hot spots here, the other one of being this screw, for whatever reason, is a little prominent. Um, it is a little bit slippery in the hands, given this blade, uh, this handle finish, that is, and then there were some nitpicks, the dent softening up a little bit after maintenance, whatever. Um, there are some fit and finish follicles, nothing too bad here. Uh, I don't love the pivot and bearings and not necessarily what you want in a hardcore cutting tool. Um, on the ugly front, the only real ugly thing here is that well, Kaiser's warranty still uh, prohibits this assembly. That said, um, you know, their biggest issue for a long time was that they had very soft screws. So you would just be taking it apart and the little bit of thread locker they do use just strips the screw out in a heartbeat. I haven't noticed that lately. In the Kaisers I've gotten seen in the last six, seven months or so, um, I, I've had much better luck there. But it is something you got to keep in mind. You don't want to use a lot of torque on that because if you do strip it out, you might have troubles. Uh, I've heard of people getting warranty, but it's still ugly. They need to fix their warranty so this assembly is... If it's done and right, it's not a problem for it. And that's ugly, and I'm going to just keep saying it's ugly until they fix it eventually. But uh, that's really the only ugly is that they prevent disassembly. Let's jump into the final conclusion here. Final conclusions... This knife came at just the right time in my life, I feel like, um, because I had just been, I'd, I'd had a spate of knives that didn't really cut that well, and that had really kind of iffy actions. I, I, I had, you know, a lot of unpleasant stuff had come across my table lately, and it came in a package with two knives that are fine, but this uh, Kaiser Guru and the Kaiser Kala. Um, but nonetheless, this guy really jumped out at me and really brings me a lot of joy. I love this knife very much, and it makes sense that I would love this knife. Um, in some ways, I was think I was talking to Bird at the Birdshot IV channel and said something along the lines of, there's a lot of the sleesh buoy. I think he said, oh, it's boring, so you'll love it. Yeah, makes sense. But anyways, I mean, this knife is in many ways like the Spyderco sleesh buoy and the Spyderco Nilaka spent an intimate night under the starlit Chinese sky. It's kind of a beautiful hybrid in that way. You get a very beautiful design uh, with a very nice titanium handle and frame 
Nalak uh, that's coupled with a utility-minded blade like on the Nalaka that just cuts like freaking crazy. And then you put in this fact that it's got this weird bearing thumb stud action that's just a joy to use, and you give it a great price. The, the All things considered, this is a great knife. And it's kind of one of those simple, boring things done well that just really scratches uh, scratches at my heart strings. The heart strings get scratched at? I don't know. Whatever it is, my heart strings are affected in some ways. Pulled. They get pulled. That's right. Um, but my heart strings are pulled by this little guy. The bearings are going to add complexity and might be a problem for some, but by and large, it is a simple, solid working knife. And at least in my opinion, this is the very best thing that Kaiser makes at the moment. At least that I'm aware of. Maybe there's a gem that I haven't handled yet, but we'll see. Uh, but this knife is absolutely 100% clearly a gem. It brings me a lot of joy. I'll say, I don't really love the optics of calling a freebie knife a gem. Something I thought long and hard about and probably carried this knife more than I needed to just to make sure, but I feel like this knife has absolutely earned that title and I gotta call it like it is. So, um, you know, there you go. This is a great knife. I like it a lot. I'm really strongly contemplating keeping this one around. Making a donation of cherry to something to uh, assuage the guilt of keeping a freebie. But nonetheless, um, yeah, it's a very, uh, very, very good serious cutting tool. There were lots of good serious cutting tool choices out there in the world, but with the nice handle design, great blade, great steel, and a solid price, I, I feel like this is definitely worth checking out and probably picking up if you're after what it's selling. So, there you go. That's the T1, and at least it's T number one for me. Hope this has been interesting to you and have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.